Hey everyone, in today's video, I am going to unbox the BenQ SW271 color management monitor. This monitor is designed and made for photographers, video editors, basically anyone who needs critical color accuracy. Now this video is a sponsored video. Actually, the next two videos are also sponsored videos. In the next video, I will be giving you the full review and the third video will be me comparing the SW271 with the SW240 and also the current monitor that I'm using, the SW2700PT. I could probably combine the three videos into a single video, but that video is going to be very long, like maybe 40 to 50 minutes. So what do we have here? This is the individual calibration report. So each monitor is color calibrated from the factory, which is great. But with such monitors, you will also want to do your own color calibration so that the colors are consistent across all your monitors. So these are some of the features. I will talk about the features in the full review. So let me just take out some of the things first. This is the stand. I will take out everything first before I assemble the monitor. This is a very thick piece of styrofoam. And we have a few more boxes inside. I'm not sure what's in this. Probably the shading hood. This is probably holding the cables. Oh, this is, oh, this is the stand. And we have the display right here. Okay, all right. Everything is very well packed. There's no way of the items moving inside the box. Let's see what's inside here. So we have this, this, the user manual, the drivers and Acrobat reader. You probably would not need to install any driver. Such monitors are usually plug and play monitors. This is the, let me just unwrap everything. This is the USB cable that allows your monitor to work as a USB hub so you can use the extra USB ports and also the SD card reader on the monitor. And this is a USB-C cable. So this monitor supports USB-C, HDMI cables. We also have a mini display port to a full-size display port cable. This is the power cable. Depending on where you are, you may or may not need to use an adapter. And lastly, this is the hotkey puck. So I'll talk more about this in the full review. So we have HDMI and a mini display port for the graphic connection. You can probably use USB-C for the graphic connection as well, but this cable is not as long compared to these two cables. Now let's see what's inside this box. Yes, we have the shading hoods. There are several pieces, so you do have to assemble them yourself. So these are the pieces for the shading hood. The construction and build quality is very solid. So on this side, we have the plastic finishing. On the inner side, we have this black soft velvet like material that absorbs all light. Right now I'm pointing to the window with strong sunlight outside and as you can see it absorbs all light. This is very nice. If you are a subscriber on my YouTube channel you probably know that I have been using Dell monitors for the longest time and recently changed to using a BenQ monitor. When I wanted to buy a new monitor a few years ago I was deciding between the Dell and the BenQ, but eventually went for the BenQ because it comes with the shading hood at the same price. So the Dell monitor has exactly the same specifications as the BenQ, but because it came with the shading hood, that's why I went with the BenQ. And it turned out to be a very good decision. So this is not that difficult to fix. So now we have the side and the top. There are actually labels on the panels that tell you where the parts are supposed to go. So LT means the left top and L, this goes to the left, obviously. 
For these two pieces, we have L1 and R1. These two are for use when your monitor is in portrait mode. So this is how the shading hood looks after being assembled. Now having this included is actually one of the main selling points for me. So this is actually facing front. And this is the stand. So this is the base. We have some hard plastic here. And this is the lock, some rubber fit. This is huge compared to the current base that I'm using. So we are supposed to fix this here and we need to lock it in place. You have to make sure that the screw thread at the end of this stand, it aligns with the hole here for this knob. So this is the stand. It's a pretty large, it's a big stand. And it seems like there is some sort of spring inside. We have the carrying handle here, which is very useful. This hole here is for cable management and you can twist the stand around to adjust the monitor. Before we put the monitor on the stand, let's take a look at the back. So this is where we fix the stand and it looks like we can VESA mount this monitor. On this side, we have two USB 3 ports and this SD card reader. Because th these three ports are actually on the back of the monitor rather than on the side of the monitor, access to these ports are not going to be as convenient. These are the ports at the bottom. We have this for the power cable. This is the micro USB port for the hotkey puck. HDMI 1, HDMI 2, both are version 2.0. Display port version 1.4. This is the USB C port. This is the USB upstream port, and this is the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And now let's fix this onto the stand carefully. All right, it's really easy to fix onto the stand, and the spring that I told you about is. It's really strong, but once you have the monitor on it, you can actually adjust the height very easily, very smoothly. So this monitor supports tilt, rotate, and the height. So this is how the back looks after connecting the cables. I'm actually using the old cables from my previous monitor so that I don't have to disconnect everything. Now, I run the cables actually through this handle here so that when I turn it to the front like this, I will not see any cables beneath, which is really cool. I don't use the cable management hole here. So let me just fix on the shading hood. Now there are actually slots on the side where you can just slot in the side of the hood. All right, it's done. Let's power this up. I'm using Mac OS here. In my full review, I will also be testing this monitor with Windows. So I forgot to connect the hotkey puck. Let me just do that. All right, this is fantastic because I can really lift the monitor really high up and my head can actually go underneath and look at the port that I need. I cannot do this with my current monitor. Oops, this side is not secure. Let me just secure this properly. Let's test the buttons here. So, all right, uh, one thing I like here is you can see the labels here, the directional labels for the buttons. So this is very intuitive. We have picture in picture, color adjustments that allow you to adjust the brightness, contrast, sharpness, color temperature, gamma, color gamma, hue, well, there is a lot of settings you can change here. So I will go through some of the settings in the main review. So this is a 27 inch monitor that supports 4K resolution and it supports up to 99% Adobe RGB. So the color accuracy is supposed to be very good. Now notice there is strong sunlight coming in from the side here. So this is where the shading hood is very useful. Usually when I'm working, when I'm editing photos and videos, I will also close my curtains. So the shading hood will provide additional shading for the screen. It's, this is something that I really like. And also notice that I have this USB card reader. 
that is connected to my computer. So I'm actually using this rather than the card reader that is built into the monitor because it's easier for me to access that card reader on the side there rather than on the back of the monitor. Another thing to note is the anti-glare on the screen. So now I'm in a room with really uh, strong sunlight coming in. So I need to close my curtain to block out the light. So this is how the screen looks like right now. And the uh, anti-glare, it no longer reflects my red t-shirt. So the BenQ SW271 is actually a true 10-bit IPS panel. By the way, it also supports HDR10. The colors, they look great out of the box. I will still need to color calibrate this, of course. I will be using this monitor intensively for the next two weeks on both Mac OS and also on Windows when it comes to editing photos and videos and I will report back with a full detailed review. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch out for that review when it comes out. And also if you have any questions regarding this monitor, any things that you want me to test, let me know in the comment section below. So thanks for watching today's video. See you in the next one. Bye.